Williams, time traveling deadite slayer. Duke Nukem, cigar chomping alien destroyer. If these deadly foes were to fight to the death, who would win? To find out, our team of dedicated researchers dig through the bowels of the internet, movies, television, comics, and more to learn our warriors' strengths and weaknesses, weapons and skills. Then, two of our researchers engage in a verbal duel on behalf of their warriors. Points will be made, blood will be spilled, lives will be crushed, but ultimately, one will be... The Nerdiest Warrior! Welcome to Nerdy Story. I'm Blasphemous in 1942, and let's introduce our fighters. Representing the muscle-bound defender of Earth, Junebug, an avid player of the Duke Nukem games. In 1991, Duke Nukem was introduced to the world as a side-scrolling computer game. He has been redesigned many times, and now... He is a 240-pound man who can bench press 600 pounds, and fights alien hordes with his bare fists or any other weapon he can possibly pick up. Duke has defended the Earth and its women from hostile aliens for years. But how will he stack up against a man who has fought enemies not from space, but from beyond the grave? Representing S-Mart's top employee, the Jester King, a fan of all things Bruce Campbell. In the 1980s, Ash Williams and four of his friends took a trip to a cabin in the woods. There they encountered the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, the Book of the Dead a book bound in human flesh and inked in human blood. One by one, the book took control of Ash's friends, turning them into undead freaks who wanted to make Ash one of them. It even got into Ash's hand, and like a true badass, he cut it off and replaced it with a chainsaw. After the Deadites destroyed his life, Ash vowed that he would destroy the book and any horrors that came from its pages. One of Ash's greatest virtues is his ingenuity. And at long range, Ash will use his specially modified Gatling Gun! A Civil War relic turned into a deadly meat grinder. In the movies, Ash didn't have much range. But in Evil Dead, a fistful of boomstick, he gets an arm-mounted Gatling Gun. This thing rips through Deadass, leaving only a puddle of blood and guts. Against the Gatling Gun, Duke Nukem brings to bear the Ripper. A triple-barreled, lead-spewing monster. The Chain Gun Cannon, also known as the Ripper, is a 7.62mm gun. It holds 50 bullets in its magazine. This weapon decimates alien infantry. So I've heard from both of you. We have a lot of rounds per minute, we have a lot of rounds per minute, we have a lot of damage, we have a lot of damage. So it's going to be other details that are going to change this fight up and really turn the favor. So for one thing, the Ripper has 50 rounds that need to be reloaded. Uh, how does the Gatling gun act? It just keeps firing until it runs out of ammo. So basically, once Ash has expended his ammunition of it, he's pretty much done with that weapon. Yeah, but the thing's ammo capacity is enormous. It holds 1,000 rounds inside of it. It's a fair point. It's a fair point. Yeah, but he has it on the end of his hand. You know how hard it is just to hold that one-handed? I mean, Duke Ripper has a stabilizer, so he can have good accuracy while he fires. This thing is known for horrible recoil, but Duke, he doesn't even feel a thing while this fires. The ammo capacity is nothing. Duke carries 200 bullets, and that's four magazines right there. Yeah, but after this runs are expended, he does have to reload. So I'm seeing a lot more stability out of the Ripper, but I'm seeing a little bit... You don't have to reload with the Gatling gun. So I'm definitely seeing pros and cons here. I'm curious to see what the judges are going to think. Stability and accuracy, or raw firepower? Our judges decide. I'm afraid I'm have to, gonna have to give the advantage here to the Gatling gun because I feel like it could fire more often before I need to reload so the more bullets can be shot out in a smaller amount of time. My vote of the long range game goes to Ash. I find that the sheer volume of bullets that you're gonna get with the Gatling gun is gonna be more than what you're gonna get with the Ripper. The Ripper's gonna be a little bit more accurate, but you don't need accuracy when you've got a Gatling gun spraying everywhere. I'm going to give Duke Nukem the edge in the long range competition simply because his gun is more reliable. If he needs to reload, which is the only real downside to it, he can just duck out of cover and then slap a new clip and he's good to go. For this round, I'm going to have to call it a draw. On one hand, Duke has a lot more accuracy and less rounds, while on the other hand, Ash has more rounds but probably has less accuracy. 
So for this round, after much thought, I'm going to have to call it a draw. In the long range weapon fight, Ash has the advantage. Although Duke does have a more powerful gun, he must reload after every 50 bullets. Ash doesn't have to do that. He has a thousand round Gatling gun that could melt Duke in a matter of seconds if he doesn't get cover. At long range, Ash has the edge with his Gatling gun. Whether Ash is a good guy or a bad guy, he has the most reliable weapon for mid-range destruction. The Boomstick! A double dose of undead annihilation. When Ash shifts over to mid-range, he uses his trusty Boomstick, a 12-gauge Remington shotgun, S-Mark top of the line. He found this gun in the cabin and using his own chainsaw hand, sawed off the end of it. This thing is lethal, blowing off the heads of deadites in a single shot. Swallow this. Up against the boomstick, Duke provides a staple of his armory, the shotgun. A pump action alien blasting menace. Duke's iconic shotgun is the Winchester 1300 Defender. Now this 12 gauge shotgun can hold up to 7 shells. He can decimate a pig cop with just one shell. And with the grip in front, this gives him awesome stability. Okay, now we're moving to mid-range. We're talking about a pair of iconic shotguns. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Let's start with Jester King and the Boomstick. Dead eggs are much tougher than the average human being. They can lose an arm, they can lose a leg, and it will be nothing for them. They will keep going after you. They can even lose their heads, and they will keep going. The fact that this thing not only blows their heads off, but kills them, is a sheer testament to its power. I'm hearing the arguments, and the arguments are great, but there's one critical factor that I think is going to be a big issue with these shotguns. We have two kinds of shotguns here. We have brake action, or we have pump action. Now with brake action, you have two shots, then you have to reload. And how easy is it to reload when one of your hands is a chainsaw? Whereas with pump action, you know, Duke's got, was it, how many rounds was it again? It has seven rounds, and it has shown that the first shot takes 0.82 seconds to re-pump the shotgun, and then every subsequent shot takes 0.5 seconds to reload. That is impressive. But, so it seems to me like Ash is going to need to hit with those first two hits, or else his medium range weapon is pretty much done. To be fair, if Duke gets hit by the, either of those first two rounds, that would be a major blow for him, yes? That could. Yeah. So I definitely see the, the two sides here. Which of these buckshot blasters will reign supreme? Have to give here the advantage to the shotgun, simply because easier to reload. Back to the matter is, it is kind of hard for the dexterity thing Ash has. It does have the chainsaw for the hand, so it's all cumbersome and awkward. For medium range weapons, the choice was clear. Duke has the gun that has more rounds and can fire more quickly. Duke, Duke, come all the way. Medium range, I'm giving you the Ash Williams. Why? Because you can't beat the boomstick. I steps can't stop bullets. All he has to do is get out of the fire, reload, and he's back in. If Duke gets hit with that once, even grazed, it's going to stop him. Whereas the pump action, that doesn't have as much stopping power. For this round, I'm going for Ash. Duke might have the advantage of being able to reload, but Ash can also get time to reload. And plus, his uh, shotgun packs a big punch, so this round is going to Ash. In the mid-range fight, Duke has a clear advantage. Seven shell pump action shotgun versus two shell break action shotgun. While the break action shotgun is sawed off and does more damage, if he misses, he's screwed. Duke has much more shells to shoot with, and, even though it's less power, you have a more mid-range. At medium range, the edge goes to Duke Nukem for the shotgun. Even without weapons, Duke Nukem is a force to be reckoned with. Able to defeat his enemies with his bare fists. Duke Nukem's way of serving a deadly knuckle sandwich. Now when Duke needs to, he will get into close combat and use only his hands and his feet. Now, he bench presses 600 pounds, he decapitates aliens with his own fist, he is able to punch a mini battle lord in the nut and make him feel it. But Ash relies on more than just his fists at close range, he pulls out his iconic chainsaw, a flesh tearing, gas guzzling weapon of terror. When Ash cut off his own hand with a chainsaw, he took that chainsaw and modified it and stuck it on his stump. This thing has cut through its share of deadites, and he wields it with such precision and accuracy as if it were his own hand. 
Now we're getting into the close range debate. The question of who will reign supreme when things get up close and personal. Now we've already got the guy with the power tool versus the guy who's barehanded. Now that's kind of a grim prospect, but what do you have to defend yourself? Well, as I see the chainsaw, it looks clumsy. I mean, that he may be sure already, but still, if you have limits to the chainsaw, and by the looks of it, you need two hands to use it to rev it up to have that full power. Without that second arm to rev it up, you don't have that full power. Ash doesn't need two hands. He's been wielding this thing with one hand since day one. On his harness, he has a little clip that's attached to the starter cord, so all he really has to do is pump his arm to start it up. As for its clumsiness, yes, it's going to be a little bit harder to wield than, say, a fist, but the fact that it has so much more range and power than your fist means that it's still going to kick your ass. Range and power means nothing if you're predictable. I've seen weapons like this. Take, for instance, a war hammer. Now, two-handed, and you need to use a lot of energy in order to put your strike against that. That's a lot of power, that's a lot of energy, and that will hurt someone. But because of its wide swing, it is predictable. And Duke, all he has to do is read your body movements. If you go high, he'll go low, aim for the stomach. If you go down, go to the side, aim for the ribs. It's a legitimate point. While you're using a big weapon like that, you're vulnerable. Now, I'm not saying that Duke's necessarily gonna get it every time. I'm not saying necessarily that it'll be a knockout hit, but if he exploits that, he can get inside past the range of the blade and mess him up. But if he fails that, he's gonna get cut up. So once he gets in close, has Ash fought someone who can bench press 600 pounds? That's breaking ribs. You are feeling pain. And when you feel pain, you're losing more energy because you have to worry about other attacks that Duke may be able to do. I mean, he can puncture your, your lung and you're done. Let's not disqualify him completely. Ash is good at taking hits, but he does have a point about how he is physically more fit than Ash is. That, that's true, but the other thing is you're talking like he's going to get tired from wielding his chainsaw. He gets exhausted, yes, but not from wielding that thing around. He's got so much experience with it that his arm has kind of, it's built up, it's gotten used to the weight. It's like swinging an arm around. And then the other thing is, for a punch to take me down, you need a bunch of blows. I only need the one. To your gut, to your neck, to your chest, any one of those is going to kill you. All right guys, let's go ahead and bring this to an end and move the conversation to a head, all right? So, we can both agree that both of our weapons are deadly. Yeah, mine's deadly. But yeah. Well, that'll be for the judges to decide now, won't it? Which of our warriors has the better technique at close range? Our judges decide. Alright, are you serious? It is a chainsaw! Fist versus chainsaw. <laughs> chainsaw. Close range Ash Range Supreme. That chainsaw can just saw through people, and he's very, very proficient with it. Duke, on the other hand, is very, very unsubtle. Just fists up, going swinging with not a lot of finesse, so he's probably just gonna charge right in and land right on that blade. For short range, my bow is once again going for Ash. Ash simply has a lot more range than Duke's fist. While Duke can't dodge, Ash is really quite capable with the chainsaw. He probably easily slice off one of Duke's hands or bow. So my bow, this one, definitely Ash. Almost no contest here. Am I getting paid for this? The chainsaw obviously wins! I'm probably gonna be the odd man out, but I'm actually gonna go with Duke in the close range category. Simply because I think that hand-to-hand -hand combat gives him a little bit more versatility, and if he can get past the chainsaw, you know, if he can get inside the range of that chainsaw, past where the blade is, he can take off Ash's head with one good punch. At close range, Ash dominates with the chainsaw. In the final category of X-Factors, we look at the intangibles, the inequalities within our warriors that give them their edge. Duke's X-Factor is battle experience. He has been fighting for 21 years. His enemies may have changed, but he always came out on top. I mean, he has fought against the alien queen and still came up on top. And she's the biggest and the baddest, and he has still brought her to her knees. Even backed by his vast experience of war, what does Duke have to fear from Ash Williams? Ash's X-Factor is his determination. This is a man who will do anything to come out on top. 
This is a man who cut off his own hand. This is a man who murdered his sister, his best friend, his best friend's girlfriend who he didn't know very well, and his one true love. And he did it all just for survival. Now we're into the final category, X Factors. We have Battlefield Experience versus Determination. So, Junebug, you're first. All right. Duke, like I said, has been fighting for 21 years. His enemies may have changed, but he always brings the same tactics and hasn't failed them. And he always brings the enemies down. No matter how many they send out, no matter how big they are, he always defeats them all. All right, all right. So he's fought pretty impressive odds. Yes. It's pretty good. So if I understand, Ash has fought pretty bad odds too. Well, still. All right. You think your odds are tough? Try taking on the ultimate evil. Evil incarnate. This thing takes possession of people, loved ones, and throws them in your face trying to murder you. And Ash handles it all skillfully and with a kind of grace that allows him to spout one-liners that are just so awesome. His determination has allowed him to not only survive, but thrive in harsh environments. When he gets sent back to the past, he manages to make some sort of weird robo and thing in medieval times. Can Duke do that? No, but Duke has fought in aliens' land. He went up to space to fight these things, and this is their territory that they brought to invade Earth, and he brought them down still, even on their terms. Well, once again, Ash got thrown back to the past, which was kind of the dead Ash terms. He was also in an alien land that he'd never he wasn't accustomed to, and he managed to take down the Deadites and the Necronomicon on their terms as well. So, both of our guys are very impressive. I'm really curious to see what the judges are going to say when it comes to the determination and survivability versus overcoming incredible odds and, and having a lot of battlefield experience. Battle hardened experience or ruthless determination? Which X Factor is superior? You have the advantage here to Duke simply because Experience and actually surviving counts for a lot, and I think outweighs Ash's determination and sheer guttiness, so... Duke. In the X-Factor category, when I look through Duke's resume of death and destruction he's caused, I am very, very impressed. I give Duke's X-Factor Battlefield Experience the edge in this contest. Uh, X-Factor, I'm going to give to Ash again. Ash has the both determination and, I figure, a lot more adaptability on hand with weapons that can just take you out of the fight pretty quickly, that's going to really change the game. For X Factor, I'm going to have to once again give this vote to Ash. Ash's determination and attentiveness have helped him accomplish what most people would consider impossible. He has survived so much through his determination. Even when his hand was possessed, he was willing to cut it off just to survive. In X Factor, Duke has the field. While Ash did go back in time, Duke went out in space. This is outer space. And Duke's taking on pretty much like the entire Master Chief situation. One soldier versus a nation, and he wins hands down. Ash is fighting more intelligent zombies that are a little bit more determined. Duke's fighting enemies that have guns. Guns. He obviously knows how to take bullets. So even though Ash has the advantage with the Gatling gun, he knows more than enough to take cover when he's firing. So in this factor, Duke wins. Duke Nukem's battlefield experience gives him the edge in X Factors. Before the final battle, our judges have a few more notes to make. Ash is an original badass. Duke, he's just a lame imitation, a parody even. He even steals Ash's lines. Hell to the king? Come on, hell to the real king. Ash. Ouch. That's pretty staggering. Any comments? Do you really think that Ash has a tough? He's basically fighting undead humans, which is like a zombie, pretty much. Duke has been fighting aliens that have advanced technology and not only incorporates the weapons to themselves, they incorporate cybernetics. Then he has fought commanders and overlords, and these guys have way more advanced technology. I mean, he, this commander, he has pretty much a saw blade around him, and Duke has taken that like a boss. Zombies? Really? Zombies wish they had an ounce of the lethality that a Deadite has. Deadites are sentient. Deadites think. 
They aren't just driven by hunger. They have a clear goal, which is to kill you and make you one of them. Not to mention the psychological aspect of it. These things talk and talk and try to get into your mind. These things drove Ash insane. He used to be a nice guy. He used to be kind of a wimp, actually. Until these things got a hold of him and turned him into the hard, uncaring, determined badass that he is today. All right, guys, all right. I can appreciate the banter back and forth, but I think we need to cool things down a little bit here, and let's just see what the judges have to say. Let's end this thing once and for all and decide who is nerdiest. The debates are finished. The die is cast. Who will win in this one-on-one -on -one battle between two larger-than-life men, Ash Williams or Duke Nukem? Shop smart, shop S smart. This is disgusting. Ah, uh, much better. Sir, what do you think you're doing? Bonjour, la hot stuff. You must be a parking ticket, because you got fine written all over you, baby. Nothing wrong with a little double dipping now and then. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to leave the store. Who the hell are you? Name's Ash. Housewares. Blow it out your ass. There can be only one. Let's go. It ain't over yet. Damn it! <coughs> Looks like cleanup on aisle four. Looks like the best man won. Refuse! Refusal! This did not happen! Ash would not lose! To someone as lame as Duke Nukem. Duke went in there to kick ass and chew bubblegum. He was able to kick ass without his bubblegum. And really, come on. Hail to the true king. Hail to the king, baby.